Hey guys, can I get some chips? What should I do with this? Kill it off! And now what? Make the chips! I have everything I need to do by myself. Thanks guys! You're welcome! Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another fun episode. This episode is really important because today I will show you how to select anything in Photoshop. And for that we will use a few different selection tools and selection methods because unfortunately we don't have one tool to rule them all. Well, that would be really, really great to have only one tool to make a perfect selection. But we are not there yet, maybe one day, who knows. And for now, in some situation we can use just one selection tool to create that perfect selection, but sometimes we need to use a combination of two or more selection tools and methods to create a perfect selection. And after that, we can extract the model or the object out of the background, change the background or use adjustment layers to uh, make some needed adjustment just to that selection and so on and so on. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's the fun begin. Alright guys, this is our first image for today and I will start this episode with the first tool on the tool palette here that uh, we can use for a selection, that's rectangular marquee tool. If you press and hold here, we will have elliptical marquee tool and then single row or single column marquee tool. So those two are rarely, rarely used, but I will go with re rectangular marquee tool, so it's really straightforward, just create any kind of rectangular shape or if you want a square shape, you need to press and hold shift it will create a square shape and that's it. Now you can do with this selection whatever you want. It's the same with elliptical marquee tool. You can create ellipse. With the space bar, you can move this ellipse all around and with the shift key, you can make a perfect circle, bigger or smaller. And again, with the space bar, you can move that circle wherever you want. For example, I want it right here and then I want to change the color of this portion into some other color I can use hue and saturation adjustment layer and just change the color right here into something else and that's it. We can use those two tools really straightforward and there is no need for other uh, explanation here. All right, the next selection tool is the lasso tool. Lasso tool, you can press L on a keyboard to go quickly to lasso tool or just go here to a tool palette, go to lasso tool and if you press and hold right here, you will have polygonal and magnetic lasso tool as other options. We will go through those two a little bit later. Let's start with the regular lasso tool. This is basically a freehand selection tool, so you can really easily create any kind of selection, that's it, and then do with this whatever you want. This is not a precise way to select things in Photoshop, but it is a really good way, for example, if I want to get rid of those dice here, I will just go quickly around them, press shift backspace, go to fill content aware fill, press OK, and that's it. I'm done. Lasso tool is really the fastest way to do that. Okay, another selection tool here is polygonal lasso tool. This tool is really great if you have some straight line object like those um, cardboard figures to select because polygonal lasso tool will create only a straight line and that's it. And you can use it to select some things like houses, I don't know, these cardboard figures and so on and so on. And let me show you, just go click, click, click. This is not so precise right now because I'm uh, rushing this just for the time sake of this tutorial. But this is the point. You can really easily and really precisely do that. You can zoom the image a little bit if you want and you can finish this really quickly. All right. And now when I finish with this selection, I can press Control Command J, maybe create duplicate of this, make it smaller and put it, I don't know, right here or I can put it on his head to sit right here, why not? Right, a lot of possibilities. So I will delete this guy and let me show you one great thing between uh, regular lasso tool and polygonal lasso tool, that's the Alt key. If you go to polygonal lasso tool and just create any kind of polygonal shape and then press and hold Alt key, you will quickly go to regular lasso tool and create other shapes and then you can release it and continue with polygonal lasso tool like this, right? And the same with the regular lasso tool. If you create any kind of freehand shape like this and press and hold Alt key, it will straight start to behave as a polygonal lasso tool 
and that's it, right? That's really handy to know sometimes. All right, guys, now let me show you the magnetic lasso tool. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I rarely, almost never use this tool as a selection method, but I will show you to know that this is an option too. All right, let's go to a lasso tool, press and hold, and choose magnetic lasso tool. As you can see, I have a little magnet icon and the polygonal lasso tool icon. And now, when I press and drag, just drag, it will automatically try to snap to the edges of the subject or the object that I'm trying to select. If you go a little bit off, it will still try to snap to that edge. But if you go a little bit more, it will make a mistake like this. And don't worry, if you create a mistake like this, you can just press delete key once, twice and go back and continue your selection. This is sometimes really handy, but as I already told you guys, I really rarely, basically never use this tool. But just to know, this is an option. As you can see, I missed one part, but I will not go and correct this. And we are done. Again, we have selection. We can do with this selection whatever we want. And that's how you can use the magnetic lasso tool. Right, the next tool is one of the oldest Photoshop selection tools and that's the magic wand tool or just magic wand. And that tool will create selections based on the colors and tones and it will do its own magic sometimes really, really fast and easy. Let me show you how you can use it. Right, let's choose the magic wand tool. You can press W on a keyboard and if you're not seeing a magic wand tool, that's because it's sharing the same spot here on tool palette where the quick selection tool is. Just press and hold on the quick selection and you will see magic wand. And if you want to change to quick selection again, just press and hold and change on quick selection. All right, and now we have a different icon. Uh, we have a tool that looks like a magician's magic wand. Right, and we have a few options right here at the top. First, we have a sample size. That's basically a uh, size of the sample, size of the area where the magic wand tool will sample tone from. So now it's set to point sample. That means that uh, it will only sample the tone from one point from one pixel. If I go and choose 3x3 three three or uh, 30 by 30 and so on and so on, it will make an area, basically a square of 31 by 31 pixel and it will choose a very tone from that area and it will make a selection base of that tone. So that means now if I choose point sample and select this black color, it will select only black tones on the image and if I switch that to 31 by 31, deselect this by pressing Control Command D, and now select the same black area. It will select much bigger area because it will make an average tone from that 31 by 31 square size, and it will make selection based on that tone, right? And we have tolerance here. Let's go back to point sample tolerance is basically how the tool will be tolerance to a tones. So if the tolerance is set to zero and I click on this tone right here, it will try, try to select basically uh, same tone that uh, I sample from. If I boost the tolerance a little bit more and select again from this, this tone, it will have more tolerance towards uh, those tones around and it will select more tones around that uh, that tone that I sample from. If I boost all the way to 255, it will basically select whole frame because now the tolerance is maxed out. Okay, but we don't want that because if we want to select whole frame, we can just press Ctrl or Command A and we have the same situation. And another great option here is this contiguous option. And let me show you what is that. Let's create a new layer and I will choose a rectangular marquee tool, create two squares like this and fill it with red and now if I want to select only one square with the magic wand tool I need to select this contiguous because contiguous will select only the colors only the tones inside that uh, border of the same tone so now it will select this square now it will select that square now if I uncheck this and click again let's deselect everything click again on this color it will select all colors on the screen uh, in the same tone, of course, that I sample from. And that's basically how the Magic Wand Tools works. And in this image, the Magic Wand Tool will be a really handy tool to select a uh, background, for example. I want to get rid of the background. I will go to tolerance maybe 40 or 32 point sample and just go click here. If I want to add to selection, I will press Shift and click again. 
If I want to remove some from selection, I will press Alt or Option key and remove tones from selection like this, right? And now I can just delete the background and that's it. We have those two guys, those two cardboard figures out of the background and we can put any other background behind them. All right, guys, and now I will show you probably my favorite selection tool in Photoshop and that's a quick selection tool. Let's first get rid of those two cardboard guys and let's go to another image. Here I will go from magic wand to quick selection tool and that's it. This tool is really easy and straightforward. If you want to select something, just paint across that area like with a brush and you can change the size of that quick selection tool with left and right bracket keys, exactly the same like with a brush and that's it. I will choose the size of it and just go and paint across the legs because I want to select only the legs for this example. If you want to deselect some parts like the sky in between the legs, press and hold Alt or Option key and just paint across that area and maybe the socks here and that's it. You can see how really easy and quickly this tool is working. That's why it's called a quick selection tool. Now we can go maybe to hue and saturation, change the color of the legs. Why not? Maybe create something like avatar. It's running here and that's it. If you want to select the sky really quickly and really, really easily, just do it. That's it. Here we can delete the sky if we want. Let's press delete and now we can put some other sky behind this guy and we are done. I don't know. Now let me show you. Let's undo this a few times like this and let me show you how the magic wand tool is not good for this. If I want to select the sky, mess, completely mess. I can tweak this as much as, you, as I want and I will not get the desired effect really quickly. I can get again the desired effect but I need to spend a lot more time. That's why the quick selection tool is really really handy for this work. If you like what you see so far, press that like button. If you don't like, dislike it. And if you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Right guys, now I will show you another powerful selection tool in Photoshop and that's a pen tool. Actually, I have a whole tutorial dedicated to pen tool. You can find it right here. And if you're more interested in that tool, go watch it and master that tool because this is really important tool in Photoshop. And now I will show you just example where it's handy to use a pen tool. So let's go. All right, let's go to another image. And for example, let's make selection of this straw and the glass. For that, I will use a pen tool. You can just go here and click on the pen tool or you can use a keyboard shortcuts to make your workflow even faster like I'm doing and just press P on a keyboard to enter the pen tool. And now everything is straightforward. Of course, if you want to know more about a pen tool, please watch that tutorial that I have because it's more in depth, everything about a pen tool. And pen tool is really great when you have some surfaces like this where you have a lot of curvature and you want to create really really precise selection of an object and extract uh, that object out of dragon later or do whatever you want uh, with that okay and i will really quickly do this and finish the selection now when i have my path around the glass i can press Control or command enter and I will have my selection around that. Now I can press Control command J to extract the glass and I will have two of them. I can make one smaller if I want and put it right here, why not? And so on and so on. And the great thing about the pen tool is that it saves that path for later if you want to go and revisit it to change it or to load the same selection from that path again. So to do that, you just need to go here from layers to paths and you have a working path. And if you want to load again the selection, you need to press Control Command key and click on that. You will load the same selection again. You can press Control Command J to extract this or to do anything that you want. Or if you want to change the path, for example, you can see that I missed here. The selection is not perfect. I can go and just click once on that. I have this path again load here and I can go to Direct Selection Tool, this arrow here, Direct Selection Tool and click here and move this, that's great. And now I can press again, Control or Command, Enter and load that as a selection, go back to layers, go to background layer, press Control, Command, J and extract that again. And I will have another copy of that same glass. And that's really, really handy to know. 
Alright guys, the next selection tool is based on the colors and it's called Color Range. That's a great tool when you want to select same colors in the scene or same or surfaces with the same colors and so on and so on, even multiple colors together and so on. Let me show you that real quickly. Right, let's go to another image. Let's use this cube with the smiley and some letters. And for example, we want to select only the cube, not the smiley, not the letters, not the background, just this yellow color. And for that, we can go to select and color range. That's a great tool to work with, All right? And we have an eyedropper tool. If we go with eyedropper tool and click on the background, it will select portion of the backgrounds. If we go on a cube, it will select just some parts of the cube and we want to select everything that is yellow. So we can go press and hold shift and just sample all colors, all tones of yellow color like this. And as you can see here, we have really nice result. If you want to see result on this big image, you can go to selection preview and choose grayscale. You will see exactly the same that we are seeing here. And you can add even more tones or you can choose black, you can choose white, or you can choose quick mask and that's great too. So I like here white and I want to select even more of these tones down below. And because we have some yellow colors on the background or the floor actually, it will be included in the selection, but we can fix it really, really quickly. Let's go back to uh, gray. And now we have a fuzziness slider. If you boost it up, it will select more of those tones and eventually it will try to select everything on the image. If we go all the way down, uh, it will not be so good. So we need to find some sweet spot like this maybe and then we can press OK and we will have our selection ready. So now we can go and load maybe curves or hue and saturation, why not? And change the hue of that cube. Actually, we are now changing the hue of the background because we need to invert the selection. To invert the selection, just press Ctrl or Command I and that's it. Let's go back here and now you can change only the color of the cube, not the smiley, not everything else. If you want to fix the background, you can press Alt or Option key and go here to the mask to see how the mask looks like and just use brush, regular brush, be on a keyboard or we just go here, use a black color and just really quickly, let's make the brush bigger, remove this. I will not be so precise right now, but this is how you can do it right and when you're done go again press alt or option key on the mask and that's it you have really really great option of course you can add even more like uh, maybe curves with alt or option key just go drag and drop here to copy the same layer mask and then you can make it brighter or darker do maybe a contrast or anything that you want so this is how you can select in photoshop based on the colors let me show you on another image Right here, for example, I want to select only the background to remove the background and to replace it to something else. We can again use this selection, uh, select color range and just choose white background. As you can see, I have really, really nice mask. I can go and tweak with this, maybe like so. And with the shift key, I will sample more. And that's great. Now I can press OK and again, create a mask. I really quickly remove the background. I can fix the max mask later by painting with white if I want and so on and so on. And that's it. I have really quickly removed that white background. Of course, you can do it. Let's, let's delete the mask. You can do it with the magic wand tool. Let's go to magic wand and just press and that's it. Delete the background. That's even quicker. So, there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different tools to do the same thing in Photoshop, but sometimes you can use only one or combination of few tools to do the job. So let's go to another example. Let me show you what I think. All right, guys, here we have this really interesting head out of the cubes and we have this two color background. And for example, I want to get rid of that background and to change it for some other color or some other image. And to do that, we need to create the selection for the head or for the background to create a mask out of that and so on and so on to make this happen. And quick selection tool, as you can see here, is not a good option because it will nicely create selection around the head, but all those small details inside, it will not do the job. And again, for example, select and color range, it will not do the job at all. So we need to find some other method. And great method for this example is to use channels to create a layer mask out of that 
and then to get rid of this background. So let me show you how this works. We need to go from layers to channels and as you can see we have RGB, red, green and blue channel. And we need to find the most contrasty channel to make the mask from it. And if you remember the mask, layer mask, contains only black and white color. Everything that is white, it's completely visible on the screen. Everything that is black is completely invisible. So let's go and find the most contrasty channel here. The blue is not good, green is even worse, and the red is almost perfect. As you can see, we have almost black background and almost completely white hat. So we need to make some tweaking to make this completely black and white. And for that we need to make a copy of this red channel because we don't want to mess the original channel, we will ruin the image. So to make a copy just go drag this channel on the new channel icon and now we have a copy of that. So now there are a few different options to do. One and the fastest way here is to load levels, press Control command L or go to image adjustment levels and just go here and make everything that is black even darker and everything that is white even brighter like like this and when it's completely bright like this we are done and we can press ok and that's it another way just to let you know that there are a few different ways how you can make this black and white because sometimes these levels will not work good another way is to use uh, dodge and burn tools for example we can use burn tools uh, put on shadows and exposure we can change as ever we want, maybe sometimes 50 is okay, sometimes 50 is too much, etc, etc. And just go and paint, make everything that is dark even darker. And if you go over the white spots, don't worry too much because we set to affect only the shadows. It will sometimes affect the mid-tones too, but brighter areas will not be affected. And that's for blacks. And now we can switch from burn to dodge tool put it on highlight, right, and use some exposure and you will do again similar job. Don't worry if you go over the blacks because it will affect only the highlights. If one pass is not enough, go one more time and that's it, right? And let's undo this few times and let me show you again with the levels, command and control L, this and this and this is really really fast. Press OK and now to load this as a layer mask, first as a selection you need to press and hold Control or Command key, click on that, go back to RGB to layers and just load here as a mask. Now we can go and use a solid color layer, put to any color that we want, put it down below and now as you can see we have this completely separated out of the background, perfect selection, we can change this color to any color that we want and we will still have this perfect selection. There is another way how you can use channels to create a layer mask and that's by using a calculation option in Photoshop. So let me show you that. Alright guys let's go to another image and for example let's extract this girl out of the background. So let's change this white to some other color and for that I will use calculations. But before we go to a calculations menu I like to go to channels and find the most contrasty channel for this image and in this case this is a blue one. And now that I know that the blue channel is most contrasty one, I can go back to RGB to our layer or to stay to in the channels, it doesn't matter at all. And I will go to image and choose calculations. And now the fun begins. Calculations will basically blend two channels together using blending modes and as a result it will give you a completely new channel. And it can blend two of the same channels like two reds, two greens, two blues or combination like green and red, blue and uh, green and so on and so on. And now that I know, because I know that the blue channel is the most contrasty one, I will go here to source one and choose first channel as blue and source two choose second channel as a blue too. And I will use blending modes to blend them together. And for that I will use, I will start with multiply and go with the arrows up and down and try to find the most contrasty result. And in this case this is a linear burn. And I will just press OK and I will have a new channel as a result. That's great. If you're not familiar with the blending modes you can watch my tutorial about that right here to get uh, know all the blending modes and to, to handle them better. Right guys, now we need to tweak this channel to create black and white version of this image. We don't need to see 
her face, we need to make her completely black and we have already background completely white. So we can do that by using dodge and burn tools like in the previous examples or we can use a brush tool set in overlay blending mode with black and white colors to do the same thing, almost the same thing. So let me show you both of that. So we can use burn tool, put it on shadows and just go and burn down this or we can use the brush tool, put it in the overlay blending mode, black color and just do the same. If I go a little bit over the white, it will not be affected because it's in overlay blending mode and this is how it works. All right, I can go back to normal and maybe fix some things, but this is perfectly good. Now we need to load this channel as a layer mask. So to do that, I will press Control Command key, click on Alpha 1 to load this as a selection, go back to RGB and to layers and just create a new layer mask. Now we need to invert the layer mask by pressing Control Command I and that's it. We have really, really great extraction. So we uh, just, uh, we will we'll just get rid of the background. So now we can go and create new adjustment layer like solid color, choose some nice color, maybe bluish one and put it down below. And now as you can see, we have some fringing around the hairs here. Maybe on some other color will be more visible. Let me see. Fringing, maybe a little bit darker color. Yes, you can see some white colors around the hairs. And to fix that, we can we can do that really, really easily. Just go on the mask and go to select and select and mask right here. Click on that. And now we have tons of, of options here, but I will go to decontaminate colors. Check that and Output to new layer with layer mask. Press OK and that's it. Now I have it on a new layer. I can change the color that I like better. Maybe this and we have perfect selection. Here it's perfectly selected out of the background and we can of course change to any color that we want. And that's the result. Maybe I like this blue because it's complementary with this uh, ginger hair and so on and so on. Alright guys, this is how you can use calculations method in Photoshop to create perfect selections for your images. And calculations methods needs a little bit more experience in channels and blending modes. And to get that experience, just practice a lot, apply this calculations method on tons of images and you will get there. Alright, now I will show you how you can select the trees in Photoshop or how you can replace the sky in Photoshop really, really quickly and easily. So let's do it. Okay, let's go to another image and here I want to select only the trees and the foreground here and I want to get rid of the sky. Actually, I want to replace the sky with this one. And to do that, I can use any of the selection methods that I showed you today or I can use a combination of few of them. I will use alpha channels for that and I will show another new way, another new trick how you can do that really quickly. So let's go first to the, uh, to the channel tab and choose the most contrasty channel. In this case, this is the blue one. I will make a copy of that and then I will go to levels, press Control Command and L keyboard and make dark even darker and make bright even brighter like this. I don't want to make it too bright because I will get, I will ruin the trees like so. And now I will go and use dodge tool on highlights and go and make this part white and I can make, I can use the rectangular marquee tool, select everything here and fill it with white, right? And here I can fill it with black and use burn tool to make this even darker. Okay, because I need completely black and white version of the mask. And now I can zoom it and maybe, maybe go and fix the trees a little bit like this. Just those trunks. That's nice. This one a little bit. This is good. Good. And that's great. Right, I have some spots here, but I can use just a regular brush with a black color and get rid of this. Of course, I need to go to normal blending mode and you can see that's it. All right. Now that we have our channel ready for masking. I will go and press Control Command key, click on that and load that as a layer mask back here on the tree uh, layer, right? 
but I need to invert the mask. Press Ctrl Command I and that's it. As you can see, I have a perfect selection around here. My tree is really, really nice selected. And if you have a higher res image, it will be even better because you will have more pixels to work around. Right, that's one way how you can do it. Again, the same here. You can go channel, find the most contrasty one. In this case, again, blue and do the same steps. Right now I will show you another trick how you can really quickly get rid of the sky, but there is one condition. The sky needs to be blue. It can't work with the gray sky or some other color sky. So to do that, we need to use a Blendif tool in Photoshop. If you're not familiar with the Blendif, you can find my tutorial about that right here. And now I will show you really quickly how to do it. I will not go in depth what the Blendif is and how to use it. You already have tutorial about that. Right now I will duplicate, actually I will get rid of this layer mask, right? Delete layer mask and double click on the layer and go here to blending options and down below we have Blendif dialog box. I will switch from gray to blue and I will go where it says this layer and I don't want blue to be visible in this layer, this currently active layer. So I will remove the blues out of that. As you can see, really quickly I can get rid of this guy. But as you want, uh, look at this tree right here, I will get rid of some colors on the tree. And to fix this, I just need to press Alt or Option key and separate this slider on two halves so I will have a better transition of the sky and that's that's it right I will press ok and I have perfectly uh, removed sky out of the background same here double click on this go to blend if blue this is better because we have more uh, even blue sky and I can just go and that's it right I can separate this and this is it really fast and easy way to get rid of the sky, to isolate the tree and to change the background. You can move this freely and as you can see, this is really, really great. All right, now I will show you a few more things how you can really quickly and easily select your subject out of the background using some new features in Photoshop. So let's do it. Let's go back to our cardboard figures and we have some new features here. First is select subject uh, option and that's introduced in Photoshop 2018 and it will try automatically to select your subject out of the background. So if I press this, it will calculate what is the subject, what is the background and it will try to select and it's not bad. And most of the times you need to tweak that selection. For example, I will use a quick selection tool and go with the Alt key and just remove this and this and now it is much, much better. I can change the background and everything that we did before. That's one feature. Another feature is select and mask. This is not so new feature, but uh, maybe some of you are not familiar with that. So you can go and click select and mask. And here with the opacity slider, you can lower the opacity or you can change the view from merchants to onion skin to on black and white and so on and so on. For example, I, I like this overlay and I just want to lower the opacity to see what I'm doing. I will go and use quick selection tool. It's regular quick selection tool and it will really quickly select everything. And here like this, and let's select this part. And now if we have something like this uh, part of the background visible and this, we can really quickly refine that by going and use refine edge tool or refine edge brush and just go over this. That's great. And just go over this. And this is really, really nice. I will press OK and I have a selection. I can create a mask and that's it. I, I'm done with our background, All right? And another great feature to select things is to select, let's go to, for example, this image is to select, make selections based on a focal distance. So as you can see here, these plants are in focus and the background is out of focus. So for example, I want to get rid of this background really quickly by using really nice feature and that is here in select and uh, focus area. And I can click right here, all right? And it will try, Photoshop will try to determine what is in focus, what is not. And of course, we can always refine things. We can press Alt or Option key. We will have minus here if we want to minus to get rid of this part that is part of the wall uh, behind and just like this, it will get rid of that. Or with a plus, we can go and 
make this selection visible, this part visible, and that's it. We can soften the edge and so on and so on. We can uh, play what is in focus, what is not in focus, so we can play with that too, and so on and so on. When we are done, we can press OK, but we have output option too, so we can choose new layer with layer mask or any other options. I like new layer with layer mask. I will press OK, and that's it. Now we can set another layer as a background, and we have really easily and fast uh, fastly change the background. So this is before and this is after, before and after. All right, guys, that's it for today. I really hope that you like this episode and that you learn something new out of it. Now that you know all the selection tools and methods in Photoshop, you can use any of them or combination of them to make a perfect selection for your image. And what is really important is to practice a lot to master all those methods and tools and then you will know which one will work best for your image to make fastest and most accurate selection. All right, if you have any questions regarding this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. If you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do it by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. And of course, you will get some things in return. Subscribe if you're not already, ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes, and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.